Yeah. Um, happy to be here on this beautiful rainy afternoon yeah. in Boston. And uh, yeah, just wanted to chop it up for a little bit here about what you guys are up to, how you got started on social media and really everything going on. So if you want to introduce totally. yourselves real quick. Yeah. Yeah. What's going on? I'm Henry Bedrevich. I'm one of the Pointer Brothers. Mike's older brother. Um, yeah, I'm Mike Bedrevich, Henry's younger brother. So, but uh, we go by the Pointer Brothers, make uh, social media content, comedy, sports, skits, uh, a lot of physical comedy and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, I guess how we got into it. Like, I think like one of the funniest things is kind of getting into it by accident, you know? Yeah. Uh, we were both kind of in different spots in our lives. I'm three years older than Mike. Um, I had just graduated college and I was working a job. I was working tech sales job at Oracle. So I was making phone calls, sending emails, all that fun stuff. I was a BDC at Oracle. Oh, you were? Well. Yeah. What, what, did, what did you sell? So I was on inbound and uh, we okay. was, it was a new division and then they scrapped it right when, away. Was that like like within the past so couple of years? Or? I got so I, I got hired uh, fall 2021. Okay. And then like I went through their whole like uh, their training program yeah, yeah. Um, online. And then um, I was there for like five months after that. Mm -hmm. But like inbound, basically, you know, like, oh, you sign somebody up for like a webinar when yeah. they're not interested. Okay, okay, if they okay. went to that webinar and they were just yahing you to death, they would get sent to my pipeline. Okay. And then sometimes I would call somebody and be like, hey, like, you know, you signed up for this, you know, like on prem, you mm -hmm. know, whatever, this date, whatever. Do you want to like keep talking about it? And like, no, I have no idea what you're talking about. Right. So I had shitty leads. I was just telling them that yeah. like, for the entire quarter, our team hit 27% of our quota. So as like, a team, as a team. So Dude. if it's like, if it's one person, <laughs> if it's one person, Dude. they're like, Oh, this kid's fucking around. Right. But when it's the entire team, something the entire wrong. org, you know, yeah, either the wrong. expectations are wrong. The management yeah. sucks. The leads yeah. are going Ari. But, uh, yeah, so I lasted there for, you know, a few months and then Dude. quit. And then I've kind of been hustling ever since. That's, so. that's right. funny. It's a drastically different experience than what I had, but, uh, I was, I was, uh, I don't know, man. I had, I was working with like really small accounts, like so SMB accounts, like okay. small to mid-sized businesses. But I just got really good at like signing people up for meetings. So I was, I guess how this all kind of ties in is like I was able to do my job so efficiently in like two hours, the first two hours of the day when we went remote. I started in person. I was there for a month. COVID hit. We all got sent remote. That was kind of a shit show. But I was able to do, you know, two hours, two hours of work in the morning and then like make videos with Mike for the rest of the day. And, you know, just being able to, to like exceed my goal, like, you know, my quota and, you know, do that in like a week for the entire quarter. I just give me plenty of time yeah, to like fuck around with him. Pretty hard. So it was kind of a finesse, um, but it worked out really well. Um, yeah, I was doing that. And then, yeah, Mike and I started posting just kind of like for shits. Mm -hmm. It was kind of we like, like for our friends, just like, cause we're like, we could post videos on Snapchat or send it to them, but we're like, why not like put them on social media? And, uh, yeah, I mean, you know, TikTok's just wild where it's like, hey, you know, you just start posting, you never know what can happen, right? Never was our intentions to, to you know, go viral or make a brand out of it. But when we mm -hmm. saw the opportunity, we were like, you know, let's let's kind of take it, right? Mm -hmm. um, but Mike was in a little bit of a different different part yeah. of his life. I played uh, college soccer up at like St. Anselm, okay. uh, right up in New Hampshire. And I was a sophomore when we got sent home. Same thing, you know, finished classes. Uh, and then when it was time to like, decide whether to go back to school like that fall um like soccer season had got canceled uh had to stay in your dorm rooms this and that and i made the decision to not go back you know and my parents were like all right you need a full-time job if you don't worked at a hardware store and that's when we started like creating content more serious i think august of 2020 is when we had like our first viral video and then didn't think anything of it and then we started like our handshake series which really like blew us up just doing like the weird handshakes with the homies and uh, that's when we started actually like, taking it more serious and like starting to put like a, uh, like a, not like, what is it? Like not a schedule, but uh, yeah, just, I would say just, just get more into a consistently post. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. And then once we did that, uh, kind of like, like high level, um, started growing, growing an audience. And then I decided not to go back to school. Dude, one uh, of my favorite memories of Mike um, working at the hardware store, like we had just started our Instagram page because we had done so well on TikTok. We were like, well, we got to make an Instagram page. And I don't know, maybe we had a couple hundred followers on that page. And Mike would just be at the store, like uploading stories with polls and Mike would just be like chips or salsa or like, you know, like just like the goofiest shit. I'm just like, just Mike, like we got to interact. We're like, it was like the 50 followers, like the on goofiest shit. I'd open up Instagram and see like 18 stories. And then I'll be like, cats or dogs. <laughs> you know Stuart I mean? Little or Ratatouille is a like, street fight. Who are you taking? Like just the funniest shit. But, um, obviously if, you know, grown a bit since then, but, uh, yeah it, what do you think for for you guys like it seems like 
to me and I, I've known you guys for about two years now. Yeah. Um, and then like I, I'd followed a little bit before I actually connected with you guys. It seems like you've stayed pretty much the same throughout, which is a good thing. You know, you've stayed, it's, it's just who you guys are. Mm-hmm. And the only thing that's changed is the audience has just grown bigger. Yeah. Um, yeah. Is there anything that like, was that intentional or, I mean, just felt natural as the growth happened or. I, yeah. I think we've always like, it's just, we've always kind of been goofy. Like we've mm-hmm. always kind of been doing this stuff. So it was never, we were never putting on an act, you it know? Wasn't forcing so it, exactly. Yeah. So then like, you know, when we transitioned from the, you know, silly handshakes into like sports celebrations, it's all essentially like the same kind of vibe, the same humor. It's lighthearted. It's fun. It's kind of like outrageous, but it's, you know, it's just, it's, it's not out of the ordinary for us. So I think too, like when we started the handshakes and like, that was like, what like did well for us. We're like, all right, well we're getting a small following. Can we like prove that? Like, like we know we're funnier than just handshakes, but like, can we prove that to like an audience, you know? So I think that's where it comes in. Like our content's been, you know, um, like the same, but also like changing, you know, like handshakes, go to sports celebrations, to skits. Like it's all stuff we don't always love to do and like not forcing it, but it just, putting it out there. You know what I mean? So, uh, so I think that kind of has helped us a lot too. Just like, you know, always trying to like change up the style, see what works. It's always going to be trial and error with content. I think everyone, you know, kind of knows that like, you know, we'll still post videos that don't do well at all. And say we try doing that like three times, like, all right, three times didn't work. Just try something else. But as soon as like, you know, sometimes we'll have an Instagram story and we'll be like, that's actually a kind of a funny video let's just post on tiktok for shits and it will do well and then who knows that will just spark a whole new like series like trying to play off that and then do a different one so yeah is there a percentage like now that you kind of go with okay we know these videos works the series that you guys do the wedding videos the handshakes certain things and then you know 80 percent of the videos you release are part of a series intentionally and then 20 percent experimental or is there kind of like a science to it that you guys have come up with or not really I, yeah i i mean it's kind of I, I wouldn't say there's any specific percentages mm-hmm. i mean we definitely like you said have the series that that typically work well but sometimes those get a little uh, they might feel a little stale to us or we're like hey you know we, we're, we're like coming up uh, can't come up with the next you know celebration or handshake we don't want the videos to suck so it's like all right let's let those sit for a little while we'll do something else and then kind of just come back to the series so it just it honestly whatever whatever we're feeling you know but i think that is like kind of like uh like on point a little bit like where we know like we usually don't like stack videos and like edit them and then put like post like what we do and i think a lot of people are surprised surprised is like we'll make a video edit and just post it on the spot like same day and unless we're like going on trips where we're not going to be together like you know we'll try to like like stack or, or bank content but usually you know we'll just in the moment we'll just film edit post so yeah so like because you guys don't have a bank like i know that i know you guys from your handshake videos yeah. like mm-hmm. that's what's made me you know when you've popped across my for you page but like how do you stay creative and like how do you come up with ideas for the handshakes because you're not like you know alex ariel doing a get ready with me right. or somebody <laughs> right. who's doing like dude, get, i'd like, love to see mike get, get, or, like, get like, ready like with mike <laughs> yeah, dude. i don't know if you'd want to see that no bro <laughs> I, I, I have seen it I, know, yeah. I was gonna say you've seen it firsthand <laughs> um that's that's a good question dude i think like one one thing we do is just like, we spend so much time together you know yeah. like we're always like like so much time together which is nice but we we just oftentimes just like say the dumbest shit possible like dude what if we did this for a handshake and it, like like almost like as a joke and then sometimes we're like oh shit wait that could work you know what i mean i'm trying to think of like a good example that would make sense but like we always are just like throwing out the most sarcastic stupid ideas and then you know just in hopes that maybe like oh shit wait yeah. that that's not a bad idea you know like we got to come up with a good couple examples of that, but it happens every day. Like we'll just be out and about doing something. We'll be eating breakfast and like the waiter will ignore Mike or something like that. And then, you know, we'll just say something stupid and be like, let's actually like make a video out of this. Or like when we were at, uh, uh, you, uh, UCLA and and you were like tossing the bag around or something and you're like, dude, wait, we could do like how kids carry their bags on campus. Oh "Oh, shit. Okay. And then like, we just, just make that video out of nowhere and, uh, you know, just kind of put our twist onto it. And, and it's funny. So I don't know. It just kind of comes like, like spur of the moment. I think too, like, like, like in terms of like the handshake videos and all like the celebrations, this and that, like where we will take like time off, you know, where like to, to not like force anything. Like if we don't think it's going to work, you know, it's like, all right, let's just wait. And then once we come back, like people will love it. Cause dude, it's funny. Cause nobody is ever satisfied. Like in the audience, like we'll drop like 
we've done like 28 parts to like our wedding move series. And like, as soon as it drops, sometimes the first couple of parts are like, all right, we need a part 29 or the first couple of comments. Like, <laughs> like nobody's ever satisfied. Or like you drop a handshake video. It's like, we need more. We need more right away. It's like, we just gave you one. Like, yeah. so it's funny. So like sometimes, you know, like we'll try to like keep those to a minimum and like post when it's right. Not just keep forcing like, oh, somebody's asking, let's give it right. to them right away. So it's like, doesn't get stale, you know? But yeah. I think it's interesting too with like a lot of the comedy that has become a series as well. Or like a series yeah. or a theme. Like yeah. even on Instagram stories, like who took the first sip? I think that's yeah. always funny. We're trying to get you know, that going. Yeah. Where it's super relatable mm -hmm. and it's like when you get your coffee and like there's this much taken out of it at yeah. the top, it's like who who was who was drinking that back yeah. there? You know? <laughs> I think, um and like I thought of like I got a guac from Chipotle yep. and half of it was taken out and I sent it over to you guys and mm -hmm. like you know, that's just so just funny. getting momentum around, yeah, around absolutely. Like that. I think that's like one of like a huge thing that you know we've been trying to do and trying to like install in our audience is just like is like being relatable, you know, especially in like utilizing Instagram stories to like our max. Cause you know, people want to see what you're doing in your life. You know what I mean? Like, like when we, we would do, we got to do more of it, but like giving red cards out to people like in public, like when you're on a plane, you know, somebody stands up early or somebody takes their shoes off. It's like giving them a red card or this and that. And people love that. And then people will tag us in stories, giving red cards. And it's cool to see like your audience doing that stuff too. Was that video on the plane where the dude had the most reclined seat? Was that the most like, like uh blown up in terms of media like effect video yes. that you guys have had yeah i would I'd say, say yeah yeah just i mean there was i don't know maybe like 12 or 15 different sites that were writing articles about it and stuff like that which yeah. i just thought was so funny and the way they write their headlines and all that it's like this was an eight second video of mike giving a red card and uh but, yeah it was like what, what was it he was sitting in the middle seat yep on a plane like West Coast to East Coast. Yeah, I laid to Boston. And the dude just had, his seat was broken in front yeah. of you. So it was like the most reclined seat yep. in history. Yeah. And that, you were giving him a red card. And that's something that started out, which was funny enough, like as an Instagram story. And like, we're like, it got, it did really well on the Instagram story. And like people were, we got like hundreds of replies to it, you know, talking. And then we're like, let's just throw it up on TikTok. See if yeah. it's a for you page. And it did. It went viral on TikTok, viral on Facebook, yeah. Instagram. And then, um, and then the media started picking up. like Fox news, like was like, Hey, do you have a comment on this? And we're like, no, like, cause dude. And then some of the headlines, it's like TikTokers ba or livid TikTokers bash, uh, plane passengers. And we're like, <laughs> we never like, <laughs> bash yeah, I'm dude, like, dude, we're not bashing anyone like, this and that. And like, people are like, it reawakens debate. Like of like, should you recline your seat? And like, what value would you put on that experience? Dude, two thousand uh, miles worth. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. We, we recently found out that Delta. Shout out Delta, by the yeah. way. Shout out Delta. Delta's airline. Good, good but Delta's they will the literally, best. like, their customer service is just like top tier. They're great. And any inconvenience, you, you can get miles for. And uh, we just, we just love it. You know? Yeah, dude. Yeah. I think actually in that case, I probably could have got like free flights for life. Probably. If I reached out to you and if you like, had gone on like Fox News, yeah, I didn't. Yeah, I didn't like, tell oh you guys my god, that. Delta was amazing. Like it was actually a really comfortable seat. <laughs> yeah, dude, I was ready up. I had Minions two loaded up or Minions movie, just the first one, right? I don't think it's, it's a tough, two. man. When you get robbed. and uh, like, like ten minutes into the flight, just goes like this, and I'm like, all right, I can't watch. Smell it. Smelling so, the uh, back of the dude's head for the yeah. rest of the flight. It was ridiculous. Oh, so you were actually sitting right behind the yeah, guy? Yeah, dude. I can oh, show yeah. you the video. I after, thought dude, he, I thought he was just like a random. The dude was like, went up to him. No, dude, I was like, it was like middle, and the dude was like. Probably like six six, like he was pretty big, and his seat was broken dude, because it reclined. Like you know, it only reclines a little bit. Yeah, it was like a good like past like a foot. three times what it should have. But it was right it was up like, against your face, dude. Yeah, like, yeah, it was right up against my. I it was like ridiculous. Kicking, kicking I should have. I should have said something, but I just sat there and in quiet and just, <laughs> just recorded it. You gave him a red bottle. card and the, yeah. yeah. I wonder if that dude has ever seen it. Like I wonder if like he's ever reached out to us. You know, or, uh, maybe I don't know. That would be funny though if he's seen that. That's wild but, though. Yeah. Um, we just had two guys on that run a business. They live in that building actually, mm -hmm. and it's a creative agency. Yeah. And they were talking about, um, you know, the balance of living together as friends, roommates, and business partners. Yeah. Yeah. For you guys, it's not just friends, but it's brothers. Yeah. yeah. What is what is that like running a business together? It's definitely it's definitely interesting. Um, I mean, I think we're very grateful because I think it's a cool thing to be able to you know do and 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 you know, go through your days, like working with him. Uh, obviously like sometimes, you know, you'll have your differences, even if this is like filming like a video, a certain way, you know, like you want, we want this angle or we think this line would be funnier. But I, I think like, we know like what's in it for the long run too. You know, like we kind of like always like set aside differences, but you know, we, we get along like really well too. And there is a good balance between like working. We know when we have to work and then sometimes when we turn it off, you know, we can turn it off, you know, we'll go right. golfing and, and we'll go, hang out and we live with our, with his girlfriend and my best friend too. And we'll be able to, you know, just do stuff normally. And, uh, 
don't know. That was kind of a shitty explanation, but but I'll see if Henry's got anything to say. No, no, it's uh, it's interesting. You know what I mean? Because it's like feels like we're working nonstop. You know, which I kind of are, but yeah. I don't know. I mean, love Mike, but yeah, we we definitely like you know butt heads at times. Yeah, I don't know. I'm not gonna reiterate everything Mike said, but yeah, it's 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 cool. It's it's challenging. I mean, thinking about like from a business perspective too, it's like maybe a little hard to keep ourselves accountable to one another. Like it's not not like we don't take each other seriously at times, but it's like, hey, you know, I want to put our heads down and work, and then you know, maybe Mike's doing something, and like his morning's a little different of a schedule than mine is. I got up early, maybe he did whatever, and then it's just like kind of frustrating. To be like, dude, let's kick it into gear, let's focus, let's work. But then it's just like, dude, like, you know, you, I got to like, I got to do my shit. Let me eat yeah. breakfast or something. You've been up for three hours, but I don't know. It's, uh, it's I think, challenging, but I, 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 you know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't really want to work with anyone else too. Right. Cause I think like without our senses of humor, it, we're not, you know, in the position that we are, you know what I mean? Like, I feel like we like work well together. So if we're not together, like, I don't, you know, and knowing just like want to succeed too, you know, right. Like how, right, like, right. You quit your full-time job, yeah. you know, steady income, killing it, doing great, have opportunities to move up in the business. And then yeah. I left college, you know, so I'm like, I'm not going to get a college degree, this and that. So like kind of taking a chance on ourselves and just like knowing that we're both responsible for that and knowing we just, you know, we just want to, you know, sky's the limit. Just keep going. So I think that helps too, knowing like we can't slack off. We're like, oh, what we've done is enough. Like, let's just go chill. Or like, yeah, it's not like film one TikTok and then call it a day. You know, it's like you're trying to do so much different stuff at once. You know, if you want to work on apparel or upload YouTube shorts, Facebook reels, all this other stuff, like, I don't know. That's one thing too we've like tried to figure out that has helped is like, hey, we don't always need to be together to work. Like we have our own separate you know, stuff like that we've assigned. Like, hey, I, I'm, I'm in charge of, you know, once a week uploading all our stuff to Facebook Reels, Snap Spotlight, Henry's YouTube Shorts, you know, working on like uh, YouTube editing, all that. And then me like trying to like, you know, grow an apparel brand too is like something we want to get into and like taking the lead on that. And then also, so it's nice to be able to like be like, hey, we don't have to be together when we're working at right. all times and still can get stuff done. So it's, uh, I don't know. Yeah, it's, 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 it's fun to, to say the least. Yeah. Henry, at what point did you quit Oracle? Like, how far were you uh, like into the Pointer Brothers journey? I was, uh, we. I'm trying to think like follower count. We've probably been doing it for a year, because you could you stayed a I little did. longer than. Yeah, I did. I was at Oracle for I want to say over just about two years. Uh, after a year, I mean, I was like I was like MVP of the of right. the org for okay. for like three quarters in a row. Yeah. Um, yeah. Partially because I was just really good at, at, at doing my job, but also it's like, you know, you kind of understand the ins and the outs of how the metrics work and you know what I mean? So, um, I, you know, was able to, to just always do my best at work, but, um, I was like the best one on my team and we had so many guys that were slacking on my team and my, my manager was just like, dude, please stay for the next three months. I'll give you your bonus. Like if you leave now, you don't get a bonus, you know? So I was like, all right, I'll stay, I'll stick around a little longer, but I was like picking up the slack for everyone. And because I was doing, you know, all that work, he was like, dude, you can just kind of like put in your, you know, hour a day and then go do the rest of your stuff. Um, so he, we, expectations were pretty set when, when I told him I wanted to leave and he was just like, like, please stick around. So but I think we were in, we were into Pointer Brothers for probably a year, I think, or, or, or like right around a year. Um, we started making money. We, we had our own little podcast for a while, um, which was nice. We signed that. We signed a little deal there, which was which was cool. I mean, we weren't making a ton of money, but we were definitely making like uh, enough that I was like, to like show like the opportunities that I was, are there. Yeah, yeah. That I was just like, okay, if I can make like, you know, this much money making videos all day, traveling, doing this shit with my brother. And you know, I'm only making this much more sitting, making phone calls, doing that stuff. Like it kind of just made sense. The transition was like pretty obvious to just like phase out of it. Um, but yeah, I don't, I, I don't remember Time necessarily line, numbers or, I mean, we probably I had. I remember like, meeting you guys. I think it was September twenty one. Yeah, and you yeah. were you were telling me that you were kind of getting ready to phase out of work. Yeah, and uh, I think I think it was then. Yeah, I want to say twenty uh, uh, February of twenty twenty two. That, that would was my sense. last February. It was like my last month. I think okay. that's when I quit too. Actually, really? Yeah, it might, might have been March, but um, maybe yeah, yeah. Because like, when does that? When does their fiscal qu like? I think it end, I think it ends in February. So I think that I probably like stayed like March. into March. So right. You get your bonus at the end. Exactly. Of March. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think yeah. that's what I did too. Yeah. But um, 
No, it's like we're kind of in a similar boat. Like we, you know, four-year school, you're going yeah. to your career fairs yeah. the entire time. Yeah, you know, you're yeah. getting this drilled into you. You're going to work a nine-to-five, 401k forever. Yeah. Like how did your peers react? How did your parents react? Yeah. This might be a question for you. Drop I me, mean, drop question. out of school. Yeah. Yeah. Whoever wants to take it. Yeah. I, I, uh, I'll go after. I don't know. I had kind of like a, I mean, I don't, I don't feel like I ever got any negative feedback or anything from from peers i mean our parents were always supportive i know mike you know is can speak to that um i had some buddies that were curious or kind of skeptical because like dude the stuff that we were making it was kind of funny too like it was mike and i doing some handshakes and then like fake a fake kiss at the end you know what mm-hmm. i mean and, you, and i'm like okay i'm 23 i work a corporate job i just graduated college and i'm like fake kissing my brother on tiktok right <laughs> like dude i had i had a really tough time like reposting all of this stuff on my personal page which has like you know two thousand followers so it was like you know but it was everyone that i n- had known in the past and like you know i i had a lot of friends that were curious about like dude really like this is you know, this makes sense. Like, okay, well, ride it as long as you can. Ride the wave, enjoy it. Oh, and I'm like, worst, which was kind of just like, yeah, dude, I'm, I'm, you know, well, ride the wave. You know, don't worry about that. But um, I think for the most part, I had friends, I, I feel like I had friends that understood and that were like, dude, I would do anything to be in your shoes. I had other friends that were just kind of like, yeah, well, like, you know, weird that, you know, you're doing this. Like, you have a job, you're making a little bit of money. Why are you going to do that? But, uh, you know, always, always supported from, from the family too, which was, which was just kind of like really helpful at the end of the day. I think like when, yeah, we're going back to your part when people say like, enjoy it while it lasts is like one of like the worst things. Like it's just like, okay, thanks. Yeah, I don't hear that. that as much anymore. No, not anymore. But like yeah. when we first started out, it's like, oh, you guys are doing that. You guys are doing TikTok. Like you're not going back to college. It's like, yeah, it's like, all right, like have fun with it. You know, enjoy it. Like, yeah. like savor like, it. I'm like, okay, like I'm going to be Well, doing I didn't it. think they, I don't think they expected it to get to part 29. Of yeah. The yeah. Dance, yeah. You know? I know. And for right. people to be asking for part 30, you know? Yeah, right. Exactly. So right. I think that, I, I also think the family thing is interesting for you guys. I think, I mean, obviously at that time you were at home. Yep. Which, mm-hmm. I think is a very iconic part of your journey yeah, on agreed. social media. Your house is like yeah. definitely a very unique place it was, yeah. and eye catching. And like, even when I first saw your handshakes, I think it was, might've been in front of your garage or something. Yeah. yeah. Like it just looks like unique. Yeah. And absolutely. Um, I don't know. Do you want to talk about that a little bit? Just like growing up yeah. there and, and using that as a space to create. Dude, that, that in itself would draw a lot of comments, you know, like when you're posting videos or you're creating content you're you know we're always thinking like what's something we could do to to draw a comment or to like you know like pique someone's interest and our house was always getting comments because it was it was a modern house very unique the floating staircases the huge glass windows um but but it was fun you know we tried to take advantage of it find like fun angles to shoot in front of um all the time i think uh my parents just sold the house and uh, someone wrote an article about about how like you know the Pointer Brothers you know it's the Pointer Brothers uh, set for for a while which is kind of funny but um, but it was cool it was definitely like an iconic spot in our I didn't know they sold it. Wow. yeah they just yeah. did they just did a, a couple they're, months are they ago. moving to Florida yeah they're in Florida they're now down, they're done yeah now. yeah okay. so it's sad but yeah. but it was uh, I don't know we were there for probably like what twelve good. years or wow, something like yeah. that yeah um, super cool and your dad's been in a bunch of videos too like, yeah what, does he like being you dude know, he like, loves it. He loves it. And, and the people love it too. Like originally when we first got our dad in the videos and like we said, like what Henry said, when we're making a normal video, we're like, what can just get more comments than, than itself? So like when we make a handshake video, you know, like we think about naming them different ways, you know, like what's going to get a funny name? Like we'll call it the fondue. Like who's going to call a handshake the fondue? People will comment on that. Um, and we got our dad in it by, we tell him to accidentally walk in our intro, be like, look at the camera and be like, like I'm in the background and like boogie out. And then people would be like, yo, wait, what was dad doing in there at the beginning? And like literally would just drive the comments up. Like other than people like appreciating all the handshakes, like that one's funny. Then you have the kiss at the end. Then you have the dad walking in. So instead of just doing normal handshakes, you could just blow the comments up. But like, that's how we first got him in where it was hilarious. Like we'd have, and sometimes we'd take a couple of tries. Like he'd walk in perfectly, like freeze and then walk out. And then, um, and then we started getting into more stuff, you know, and like more like relatable dad content that people would just love. And he's always like, I think where we've gotten our sense of humor, yeah. you know, him and like our uncle, they're like the same guy. And we've just been, you know, like, I don't know, getting our humor from them and like having him be on TikTok is hilarious and people, people love it, but he does love it. He's kind of up for whatever too. I mean, as you know, within reason, we'll just be like, dad, like this is the trend. This is the video. So what you got to do. And he'll, he'll put his own creative spin on it yeah, at times, but, love it. Yeah. but, uh, yeah, when people see him, they, they, you know, they, they go nuts for him. So we, we try to, we try to sneak him into some videos whenever we're, we're with them, but yeah. on the family funny, topic man. and like back to kind of earlier about, you know, working with your brother, 
Do you see this being like, you know, a long-term family business for you guys? Is, is, is that kind of how you're potentially looking at it? I think so. I think we, you know, like, we're, we're pretty focused right now on just c- continuing to create our short-form content, trying to dip a little more into YouTube. Um, but, like, we're, we're always trying to think of ways that we can really make this, like, you know, incre- uh, increase different streams of revenue, find different ways to grow the brand, community. you know, uh, grow our community, grow things like that. So, I mean... I, I feel, I feel like, yeah, I could, you know, we could see it, um, you know, continue to be a family business. We have an older brother, um, who, who just kind of, you know, was out of the house when we started all this during COVID, he had already moved out a year before, uh, maybe like 2018 or something. So he just wasn't a part of it. Um, and you know, we've always had the goal of finding the right way to bring him in when the time's right. So we'll see. I mean, like, you know, I think an ideal world we can, you know, perhaps create different avenues of, of the pointer brothers. And then that's where we can bring on some more characters or just, I don't like the opportunities I feel like are endless. So it's Absolutely. like, Hey, let's find the right way to do it, the right way to grow. And then just, you know, hopefully Cause I think that would be get, great. get everyone involved, you yeah. know, but I think that, that, uh, yeah, that would, that would be, that'd be cool. So it's also, you see like family two, like these people, like with like, Either like family accounts or like you think about the kid, like you know, like Joe Melee, like you know, dude, yeah. with his dad, he makes all the dad content. Um, his dad looks like the chef from Ratatouille. Mm-hmm. Like people just started, love, yeah. like the, the you know, like the relatability, you know, like even like like two turn Tony, like he has his whole family in on it. You I know, was, people, yeah. I was able to bring them up. People yeah. relate to it, so it's like all that. So it's like the opportunities are endless. Where I feel like if we had our dad consistently in our content, I think like he'd be a big part of our brand, you know. But, you know, like eventually, you know, can make that happen. But I think as well, like getting our brother in on it, you know, having like the three bros, I think is like a dream and, you know, can get that soon. And, and finding like the right time and way to, to, to get him involved would just be like amazing, you know. So, yeah. Yeah, that'll definitely be like a, just a really feel good moment. Absolutely. When you're able yeah. to present him with that opportunity mm-hmm. and, and make that happen and yeah. kind of introduce him, even though he's been in videos before, yeah. but really yeah. formally introduce him to the, to your audience yeah. as a yeah. part of what you're, you're building. Mm-hmm. Um you know, on the business side and, and revenue streams, like what are some ways that you've been able to monetize this and really, you know, have it a sustainable yeah. career for you yeah. guys? Yeah. I primarily um we've we've done a handful of brand deals, working partnerships, things like that. Um we've kind of gotten to the point where we're you know, we'll rather, you know, try to form a long term partnership with a brand that we really enjoy, that we really like, that we believe in, rather than just, you know, trying to throw, you know, random things out there every now and then. But um, that's kind of one of the biggest ways right now. Yeah. I mean, we've, I'm trying to think, um, you know, we had, a, we had a podcast for a little while, which was, which was mm-hmm. fun. That was monetized. We're trying to, trying to get back into that eventually. I think just like slowly too, like making, uh, we've always like wanted to do like apparel, like not just like a class right. of like merch, like throw a quote on a shirt or like something that went viral once and like blast it out to people on like, Android phone cases, lanyards, <laughs> coffee mugs, Spoons. you know, like I, we want to take pride and like, you know, create something that's like, if you walked into like PacSun, you're like, oh, I fuck with that t-shirt. Like, I'd like to get that or something, you know, something that like we can make bigger than just merch, you know, not just like, like, oh, the Pointer Brothers merch, like, um, and then we like, we actually made eventually our mini ties that we wear in like our wedding yeah. videos that people were always asking for, like, dude, like, wh- where do you get those? How do you do that? And we're just like, oh, like it took a while to finally create, but we created them and, the, and have sold a bunch. And now we're, they sold out the first go and now uh, they're almost sold out in the second go. So like just trying to like create, you know, mini little stuff like that. That's on brand, you know, like it's not necessarily like, like yeah, if, I went, if I went and dropped the mini tie collection, like it would make no sense. But for you guys, <laughs> yeah, it like, right. it, it works totally out. Does. And we're like, yeah. I wonder if people will actually like fuck with it. Cause it is such like a niche thing. Like, are you going to wear that in public? You're going to do this to a wedding and people loved it. So sort of like, I think that's just neat about like our brand, you know, we can drop something, that's like kind of like that and like people like it. So, um, and dude, it's actually funny. A lot of people we've gotten over like probably a hundred wedding invites. And I think eventually we want to <laughs> yeah. try like thing like may, maybe making like a wedding tour. That's and I think sick. that would be awesome. Yeah. Just the opportunity is, you know, like going to the weddings and like, you know, making people's days, you know, cause they've invited us and that, but also like getting content, I think would be hilarious. A hundred days, a hundred weddings or some dude, shit like could that. Do it, man. Exactly. Insane. Just so, cause people invited, Hey, we're getting married in Washington state, Washington, DC, Chicago, Texas, Florida. And we're like, dude, like nuts. we should just take advantage of this opportunity. Like 
It's crazy. It's, I don't know. It's funny. Yeah, everyone's always like, I'm so worried that no one's going to dance at my wedding, which I guess, I mean, <laughs> is a pretty real concern. We might have Can to cut this out because, like, I don't want anyone to steal the idea, but, like, if someone did a <laughs> True. reality TV show of you guys just going to weddings, like, that would be ins- that would be so Dude, sick. I think, think that would be awesome. I think, I mean, I, I someone could steal it, but, like, I feel like who, <laughs> no, exactly. like, it would yeah, only yeah. really like, make sense for us, yeah. right? But no, yeah. But um, that would, I don't know, that could be pretty, could be pretty, pretty interesting. Cool. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, no, it's funny. It's funny now too with like the wedding moves and the dance moves. I feel like the last like ha- half a year, a couple months now, they're starting to like catch on. Like other people are doing them, and now like people are making videos that are going crazy viral, doing like our moves, and like it's tough, dude. Like with like people aren't tagging you and everything, and like we have all of our yeah. fan base. Like yo, the point where it's, like they'll, they'll like word for word take our move, like the same title and stuff, and like I guess like people say like you know like copy whatever like form of flattery or whatever like, I don't know. So you know you're doing cool. something right, exactly, right, which is right. nice. But yeah. um, which I was gonna say, it it is cool to see though. It always but. sucks on TikTok too, a platform that's so easy to grow and get views on when yeah. someone takes millions of views that are really yours. Yeah, you know? exactly. But what are you gonna do about yeah, exactly. it? Exactly, it's how it goes. It is how it goes. Yeah, yeah. On um, you know, the other side of like creation, consuming content. Do you guys have any like favorite? people that you follow on youtube or tiktok that you watch yeah i feel like honestly like a lot of the ones that i like are are like not like or i don't even actually know how to describe it um that not many people know okay or like i don't know do you know what i'm trying to say just they like haven't really uh, taken off yet yeah like, haven't really taken off that, yeah, that yeah. are like a hundred percent going to take off and be like be like huge like one of our uh one of our best friends that we met in orange county he's got like a hundred or two hundred something k on TikTok and like just hit ten k on Instagram and he's so funny. His name's Willie Goat and he does like rants and uh, like just talking. Like he'll make four minute videos go viral and like he's so funny. Um, he just dove into like doing it full time. He's like, I'm gonna do it. We're like, dude, absolutely, you have to. And uh, like he's he's hilarious. I'll show you his page after. Um, he's one of them. What about you? Do you got any? We actually have a bunch, dude. But. Oh my god, I'm drawing a blank. I don't know why I do this. Like I I I scroll TikTok, you know often i mean maybe um, i can help you i mean you guys have posted a lot of like golf content recently yeah right, yeah, and right i've right. noticed a ton of like golf creators is there anything like on in that niche yeah we, we, there's this one it's called saint andre golf yeah okay. it's uh yeah, they do like really bro. high quality like golf skits and um and that's like like something that's like dude yeah it's like snl style like you okay. know like skits and like he'll it's not just like a one squad he'll get like other actors to like be on it too and stuff and uh we might be making some stuff with them in the future, but they're hilarious. Nice. Um, what about DJ Khaled? He's been dude, crushing. You gotta love game. DJ Khaled. Let's go right? golfing. Let's go golfing, dude. We we were just talking about him. Um, it's like how you can't hate the dude, no. and he's actually like like he's like growing the game, like which is as like you know with it, all his goofy stuff or this and that. Like dude, like if you think of DJ Khaled now recently, I feel like people will be like, oh, like the, like golfing instead of his music right now. You know, yeah. I think that's what he's more relevant for. I think which, like I mean. I'm, I don't follow golf mm-hmm. and I've probably watched an average of like, I don't know, five minutes of golf a day just by watching DJ Khaled. Yeah. It's like, like, let's go golfing. Yeah. 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 <laughs> like boom, right down the middle, right down the middle. <laughs> Not, but he's great. He's like wicked competitive too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's, you don't see a lot of those personalities in that sport. You know yeah. what I mean? So that's why I think it's, it's, uh, it's, it's fun to watch him for sure. Yeah. And that's a sport too, that seeing his videos now on golf and then seeing other people's videos, like mm. It does seem like it's growing on socials, which is a, is a cool thing to totally. see. Yeah, and it's it's like trying to like, because like we're not we're like we golf we've been golfing for a while. We're not the best golfers, but we can hold our own. But I think that's where it's like we're not like the good good guys or like this and that. We try to bring like the comedic aspect on his to golf, you know? Yeah, on his act. Yeah, and like just trying to make like skits that are like relatable. Like one of our our best ones that we do in golf is like when you get paired with that one random at golf, and it's like you know either he's either the homie you know wicked chill or you have that one who's just like create like just a wild card guy like so and people like relate to that you know so just trying to always make as much like relatable content as possible you know where people can like you know how i've had similar experiences and stuff i think the wild card you were the the wild yeah card i'm the ones. wild card one and like you were just a mess yeah a mess there. cracking a beer on the first hole asking for a lighter you know like burping like <laughs> asking taking like, crazy hacks out of the ground and, chunking it just yeah. being like kind of disrespectful to the course and like what is that golf course that you film at in in it like in LA, we have a we have there's like two that we film at. Um, one of them's like a little par three, and it's kind of just pay like 15, 15 bucks and then just go out there, which is nice because you don't need to make a tee time and all that. You're hitting off of mats, turf mats to the greens, they're all like a hundred yard holes, but like 
it's it's all you need. You know what right. I mean? You just you literally need a green and a and a cup, and that's you know pretty much it. Um, but that's the thing about filming golf content too is like you can't like just like re- like if it's just me and him, and sometimes we'll just film our own stuff. Like you can't just like reserve like a tea time for four people and go out there. So sometimes like you get paired with random people and we have to still do still our film filming and stuff. stuff. Yeah. And sometimes it can be awkward this and that, but like you kind of have to like tune that out. But, um, but that's always interesting. Cause it's not just guaranteed like, Oh, we have all the time in the world. It's like, sometimes we got to do stuff quick and this and that. But so mostly if we know we're going to film, we'll go like wicked early in the morning, like seven thirty, film everything. Nobody's yeah. there and just leave. But yeah. What are people's reactions if you are playing in a foursome and then they have, you know, two kids, fucking around on the course yeah, i know we're just slowing up the course I yeah know. I, know. I feel like we try to be good about like not taking too long yeah well, you know like if we have to like skip skip up ahead a little bit to try to film something i don't know for the most part we try we're to actually, like let people know like hey this is what we're doing we're filming some stuff we'll you know you move at your pace we'll we'll keep up um for the most part it's been good it's been good, i would but, say like you know um but you've seen like those viral vids on like people post on like instagram or tiktok where it's like somebody's doing like a TikTok dance on the green and you're yeah. waiting like 200 yards out, you know, with like your five iron or something uh, and waiting for them to get up. It's like, we're, we're not doing any of that. Like we won't, we'll be respectful, you know, and we'll do it. Like sometimes we'll go and then we'll just realize being like, we definitely can't film today. Like, let's just like, yeah. let's just play and just get out of here. We'll film it tomorrow, you know? So sometimes we'll just like be like, you know, conscious about that. I think stuff. the style of your content too is, is really nice where there's a lot of like comedy and like pranksters out there that yeah. like, actually target other people for yeah. their yeah. views and you guys wouldn't target like a person maybe you're like a, a, a student athlete yeah but yeah, it's right. like playing that kind of like the laughing. norms that like you know everybody knows like the student athletes are always walking in the halls like kind of like that right and so like it's it's harmless yeah in public or in private yeah and you know it's just making people laugh Dude, I, i've just always felt uncomfortable fucking with people like yeah. i could just never do it you know yeah. what i mean so we're so that's where we're just like Let's. I'll embarrass myself, yeah, you know. Like yourself. I can go out and do something embarrassing in, in public before I'm gonna go out and like you know st- start like messing with someone, like you're saying. So we try to we try to try to keep that that uh, theme going. You know, we'll make fun of ourselves or we'll make fun of like a group, student athletes, or you know. But nothing that's like too will get people too upset. Yeah, try not to yeah. try not to you know, rile anyone up or, or get canceled or anything. But yeah, but it's good. It's cool. A, yeah. I think we got to wrap this up in a couple of minutes, but is there anything, I mean, looking forward, um, like on specifics, any, like anything's coming soon with you guys. I know we just shot a vlog at the slippery yep. stairs. So yeah. That'll be exciting. That's coming yeah. out soon. Yeah. And like YouTube, are you looking to conquer any other platforms or other verticals right now? Yeah. I think, I think YouTube is definitely one that like, you know, we want to get back into cause we did it for, for a while. Um, in like 2021, you know, making vlogs and stuff and they were doing decent. And then we just like, Realize though, like, all right, what are we doing right now that works really well? We're just like TikTok and Instagram. That's our main, like, let's just hammer that, you know, just strictly focus on that stuff. So we want to get back into YouTube. You know, I know like we filmed that. We're like slippery stairs. Like we can't, we got to like vlog that. Like that's a great experience, but kind of just stay always, like just be consistent. Like I feel like consistency is always like going to, going to help. Um, but yeah, I think YouTube's like our biggest one. I think continue growing, um, you know, an apparel brand, you know, like something like that. Like we've kind of just like, like add like a couple one t-shirt drops here and there but really start you know like like i don't know just getting into Find that. A, finding Fu- a theme finding a yeah. like a focus with that. yeah yeah and then start only fans as well yeah the uh only fans feet finders coming no, no, just kidding. there we go we've I mean, had only fans girls on here before yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, they make a decent chunk no yeah no when, we uh we're talking to these two girls they're friends of ours and then like one of them said that she put like 40 grand on this one dude's amex because it was on her apple pay she was like buying your mom bags, like buying flights. Oh God. Uh, yeah. Mike's like, damn, I wish, bro. Like, yeah. <laughs> I'm like creating my account over when, here right when, now. Yeah. When Delta won't you give, give you enough miles, you just got to yeah. be resourceful. You go. Exactly. Find other ways to. There you go. You know. um, but I, I don't know. What would you say? Same like YouTube apparel. Same you know. thing. Yeah. I think, uh, you know, we've been having a lot of success and I don't want to like necessarily stray away from what's working. So it's like, hey, we're having fun we're making money, we're growing, it's, you know, things are going well, but yeah, let's try to let's try to get YouTube a little more focused. We did Twitch for a while, we live streamed for a while, and, and every now and then people will be like, hey, when are you streaming again? When are you doing that? And I we, we enjoy the live stream. I think it's a fun way to connect with your audience, make you seem more relatable, like real people, rather than just, you know, these content creators that post stuff. But um, I think too, like one of the things is like collaborations too. Like we've barely dipped our toe in the collabs and like, that's I know is a huge like aspect of growing and getting on other people's um, 
just make audiences fun stuff make with, fun with stuff. other creators mm-hmm. that people that people like so trying to do that you know with every sport you know because it's i feel like it's a layup when we have our celebrations handshake it's like all right let's go to the nfl let's do some sellies soccer sellies tennis like whoever so i think that's something we really want to like you know focus on and hone in on is, is, is doing a lot of collaborations this upcoming year and everything love it yeah Amazing. Well, thank you guys for hopping on. We got to clean up this setup. Yeah. But, right. uh, kicking us out at one. Yeah. Well, yeah. Appreciate, yeah. appreciate your Thanks. time. Yeah. Thanks, dude. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. 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 Yeah.